This is a 2007 Subaru WRX that we bought and modified for a total of $43,000. And this is a 2007 Subaru WRX that we bought and modified for a total of $21,000. But just because this car costs two times as much, does that mean that it's two times better? To find out, we came out here to the world famous Sonoma Raceway. It's treacherous, it's beautiful, it's downright terrifying. It's finally time to put these two cars head to head on a big girl racetrack. Does more expensive mean more better? Let's find out. But before we do, we should probably talk about how we got here. Spoiler alert, we blew five engines and you might notice that my car's not even here. Welcome to Donut. We bought two nearly identical Subaru WRXs and we've been modifying them to be time attack cars. One gets expensive parts. And one gets mm -hmm. cheap parts. Then we test them to see which parts are worth spending your hard earned money on. Here we are again, high low, once again. Throughout the upgrading and testing process, our ultimate goal is to install six major upgrades and answer three questions. Which parts should you spend the extra money on and which are you better off saving your cash? Of the six upgrades, which has the biggest impact on your lap time? And ultimately, how much faster is a $43,000 WRX over a $21,000 WRX, if faster at all? It's so simple, what could possibly go wrong? There's a puddle of coolant at the finish line. Oh my God. The high car curse continues. There might be some metal shavings in this oil. <laughs> That's a bit of an issue. <laughs> we hit the track to get some base lap times with our fully stocked Subarus. High car's best time was 136.2 and low car got a 136.3. Very similar lap times to start off with, which is exactly what we wanted. Unfortunately, oh, day one's going well. High car's engine blew up. It turns out our engine was suffering from oil starvation, a common issue for this generation WRX. Shop daddy Adam called around town, found us another engine, and this time we installed baffled oil pans in each car that would prevent future starvation. That's right, we had the baffles the whole time. Uh, I was just uh, like, because every video we put out in the series, uh -huh. they're always commenting about the baffled oil pans. Yeah, we've had baffled oil pans the whole time. That's right. Supposedly, the guys we bought the car off of had just replaced the engine as well. Day one and high car was technically already on its third engine. Now we could finally push forward with our first modification, coilovers. Zach and I swapped a set of $2,000 tines <laughs> into high car. <laughs> while well, Adam and I installed a set of $300 max peating rods into low car. Immediately, both cars saw massive improvement at the track. Low car improved by two seconds, and high car improved by two and a half seconds. Unfortunately, there's a puddle of coolant at the finish line. Oh my God. I thought you were gonna open it. <laughs> high car was overheating out in the desert, so once we got back to the shop, out of precaution, we upgraded both cars' radiators and cooling systems. The improvement on track was very close, and if we were judging the coilovers on that alone, low team's max peening rods would totally be the better value. But now that a few weeks have passed and we've been driving the car, things have degraded a little bit. Every time we drove out to the track, I felt the ride quality was worse and worse. High car takes the win on that boy. Agreed. Next up, we upgraded our wheels and tires. Low car got a set of Vores SP1 wheels for 800 bucks and Zestino Gredge tires for 600. And high car got a set of Advan RS3 wheels for $2,700 and a set of Yokohama Advan tires for $1,600. Although wheels can affect performance, at the track we focus mainly on our tires. In both a radial test and braking test, the more expensive Yokohamas came out ahead. But what really matters? was lap time. High car's brake lines were full of air and our pedal was getting mushier and mushier all day. We didn't want that to affect the outcome of our test, so we ran laps in low car first with its cheap Zestino pizza tires, and then we ran low car again with the expensive Advan. With the $600 tires, low car's best time was a 131.7, a three second improvement. That's pretty good. With the $1,600 tires, our best time was a 130.7, 
a four second improvement, but I don't know if they're necessarily a better value. If you're like a serious track day person and you're just burning through tires, the $600 ones are gonna be a lot lighter on your wallet, but you're not gonna be setting your lap records with them. Next up, we installed seats and harnesses. Although it doesn't make the car any faster, except for maybe some weight savings, a good seat will make you faster. I love when we put the racing seats in these cars. That's when you start to feel so connected to it. High car seats are definitely nicer and more supportive. I think they are better racing seats, uh -huh. but I think low cars race quips are more comfortable. Installing the seats made the cars feel great. Right after that, we also got our cars wrapped. High car and rich boy shiny money green and low car and our trademark pending low car blue both cars were really finally starting to take form and considering our engine troubles from the first week things were feeling pretty good unfortunately <laughs> after installing a $4700 AP racing brake kit on a high car and a $850 Dick Ace brake kit on low car. Only three weeks into the build while testing our cheap and expensive brakes. No, that's an axle. That's an axle. That was an axle. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. I think well, I'm just glad it was okay. Yeah. A total high car. It's okay. But we don't give up that easy. We went and bought a third, nearly identical 2007 Subaru WRX. And Adam, Zach, and our buddy Roberto, shout out Subi Dreams, worked through the weekend, swapping over all of our upgraded components onto the new high car. Also, I don't know who owned this car before us, but they didn't do much to help the WRX stereotypes. Post post high school. Oh God. Oh, magic cards and a condom. <laughs> Dude, heck yeah. Now for the second round of brake testing, sadly, Nolan and I couldn't join because we were off shooting a video with another up and coming creator. Send the jet engine! Go, go, go! Oh! Zach, Adam, and Jerry were able to run a brake fade test in which High Car's expensive AP racing brakes won with ease. Out on track, Low Car was able to improve to a 128.8. Having those big brakes gives you a lot more confidence. Mm -hmm. As for high car, the brakes felt great, but unfortunately, how's she feel? <laughs> Awful. Awful? <laughs> so bad. What do you mean? Whoever owned those Magic the Gathering cards was not kind to their WRX, and uh, high car was seriously down on power. Adam couldn't even beat the best time he put down from the time before. However, from the brake fade test to the general feel of the brakes, the AP Racing brake kit was a clear winner. Our second to last upgrade would be our biggest, turbos. High car got an ATP Garrett turbo for $2,300. And low team got a no name budget turbo for $230. Obviously, we had to upgrade some other components around the turbo, such as injectors, intake, intercooler, and more. We really wanted to make sure the turbos remained the points of comparison, so we didn't go full cheap out on low car for the supporting mods. We wanted the turbo to fail before, say, like the fuel injectors or fuel pumps. Unfortunately, Dude, that's it is gross. pretty thick. Hey, we got sparkly oil again. Shut up. <laughs> High car's oil was full of metal. Dude, there is something up with these cars. <laughs> Low car, which hadn't had any issues up until this point, showed the same thing. There might be some metal shavings in this oil as well. That's a bit of an issue. We are not making this up. Uh, if I watched our videos, I would think that we were just fabricating drama, I wouldn't believe us. We're so over budget. We're averaging an, ep uh, an engine an episode. Okay, so if we're gonna buy a used car, buy a good used car. Not one that smells bad, has a cop shift knob, and a bunch of Magic the Gathering cards stuffed everywhere. After deliberating about what to do with the cars, this series, and our lives, we bought two more engines. They were Type RA short blocks, in fact, straight from Subaru. Roberto, again, shout out Subi Dreams. Subi Dreams! Said he would be able to rebuild the engines at his shop over the weekend. Then we would get the cars back to Donut and continue with the turbo installs. 
All right, a lot of trepidation right now. There's always a tense feeling before you fire a motor up for the first time. Without further ado, let's have Justin fired up. F everything. F this. Let's see if she starts. Come on, fuel. Hey, she runs. Sounds pretty good. That's just downpipe. I still have to put the exhaust on, but you gotta hear it. We finished the turbos. We got them tuned. Big shout out to the team over at Yimmy Sport. They're like the Subaru tuners. And again, we hit the track. Stock, our car's made 224 horsepower. With their new turbos, low car made 324 horsepower. That's 100 over stock. And high car made 405 horsepower. That's 181 horsepower more than stock. That's insane. But as I always say, numbers can lie. So we did a good old fashioned drag race just to be sure. We absolutely embarrassed Nolan in the drag race. Then we tried to run some laps and Nolan embarrassed himself. <laughs> JK, uh, it happens to everybody. <laughs> Nothing to be embarrassed about. Uh, the track was a little wet and uh, yeah. those strings on the car were to help prepare for our next and final upgrade, aerodynamics. Each car was upgraded with a rear wing, front splitter, vortex generators, rear diffuser, and a do-it-yourself under tray. We spent a total of $600 on low cars aero, about $50 of which was spent on the plywood to build our own front splitter. And we spent $6,000 on high cars aero, $6,000. That's more than low cars entire turbo setup. Also, our splitter was made out of carbon fiber. Since the track conditions were so bad last time, we would run our laps with the aero and then remove it all in order to get more accurate baseline times to measure against. Unfortunately, uh-oh. Uh-oh. A little bit of smoke well, coming that around the tire corner. Tire <laughs> tire <laughs> smoke. Oh, yeah, look. No, that's not tire oh. smoke. Did he just blow another engine? <laughs> Is that eight engines? Is this even possible? Yeah. Well, we found the source of the smoke that no one was letting out on track. They lowered the car last time we worked on it. The, the uh, body's making contact with the tire in a pretty serious way. So we had to let low car borrow high car's tires for the rest of testing. So without the aero, low car ran a 126.6, but accounting for having the better tires, it's more like a 127.6, which would be just over a second faster than it was before the turbo. It's math, okay? Numbers never lie. <laughs> high car without aero ran a 124.2. Since high car's engine was basically dead during the brakes episode, it's hard to say how much improvement came directly from the turbo uh, versus the turbo plus brakes, but we hadn't even broken the 130 mark up until this point. A six second improvement feels good. Whatever way you cut it, man. Now with the arrow, low car ran a 125.4. Subtract a second for the tires, and that's an improvement of 1.2 seconds. Feels pretty good. Yeah, high car with its new arrow ran a 124.2. That is 0.6 seconds faster than without arrow for $6,000. In F1, I get a promotion. Something to keep in mind is track conditions. The track was colder the day that we tested the turbo and the aero. And James, I think you'll agree, the cars felt a lot faster, but the track itself was slower. Good turbo day, bad tire day. After a quick look back, I was actually pretty surprised to see that we didn't see bigger gaps develop between the two cars after the turbo and the aero. However, we might get the full benefit of those expensive parts at a bigger track. A track with longer straights, with more dynamic elevation, with higher top speeds, a track like the world famous Sonoma Raceway.
We hit the road from our home base in Inglewood and headed up the 101 all the way to the bay. Sonoma Raceway is a two and a half mile long track in Northern California. It's got 12 turns, 160 feet of elevation change, plenty of room for going fast, and will serve as our track to help determine, at least when it comes to two old crappy WRXs, does more expensive mean more better. Sonoma is an incredible racetrack. So to give you a sense of the layout, enjoy this ride along while Nolan tells you about today's sponsor, eBay Motors. eBay Motors is the go-to online marketplace to get the right parts at the right price for whatever you drive. They've got a massive inventory with over 122 million parts fit for cars, trucks, motorcycles, boats, snowmobiles, and more. And because it's eBay Motors, each part is covered by their simple money back guarantee. Get the part you ordered or your money back. It's that simple. Whether your budget's high or low, get the parts you can trust at ebaymotors.com or just click the link below. It's time to put the rubber to the road. So in high car, I'm gonna be driving. We'll have Nolan driving low car. And then of course we've got Adam, our shop daddy, our fair professional driver to put down some hot laps in both cars. And then of course we've got Jeremiah sitting over there texting somebody. He doesn't need to be here at all. Just wanted to pop in for some laps. You guys ever notice how like, Jeremiah gets to do just all the fun stuff. And then of course we've got James, who ever since he went off track at Willow Springs a few weeks ago, has been a little bit hesitant to get back in the driver's seat and do fast laps. I'm gonna admit, I got a little bit of the Ricky Bobby syndrome. So we've got him in a car out there with a coach. I just went out for my first session. I was hesitant to do it, but I'm really glad that I did. So let's hit some laps. Of course, Jeremiah's group was first. Yeah, what the heck? <laughs> he had his mom call, and he started the day off exactly how you would expect, like this. Do you know why you're black flag? Yes, ma'am, yeah. What'd you do? I spun. Yeah, it's fun, isn't it? <laughs> Immediately, we all realized that this was a track to be respected. Like your stepdad, he's doing his best. <laughs> he's not. <laughs> I finally got to drive Sonoma and it feels awesome. I did smell a lot of smells, but I'm gonna blame that on the other cars in front of us. This has got some pretty good laps in it. First lap at Sonoma Raceway. Hopefully the cars hold together and nothing that we don't want to happen happens. To kick things off for high car, Zach threw down a 203, while in low car, Nolan ran a 210? Wow. Meaning high car's better and Zach's cooler. I so far, so far. I agree so far. So far. So far. I was getting warmed up learning the track. Come on, we just said we have to respect this place. But it wasn't long until the times would start to drop. Jerry went back out in low car and quickly set a 201. So low car was up by two seconds. No big deal, because shop daddy Adam professional race car driver was headed out in high car and he'd be able to smoke a 201 no problem unfortunately there's no third gear down the front straight's all popped out oh no no it's gone are you kidding me we drove the cars from LA, and then in their first lap, the transmission blew up. Third gear exploded in our transmission, which is not altogether too surprising if you know anything about these cars. In fact, I'm pretty sure I've seen a bunch of comments uh, predicting the failure of our transmission. And to be honest, I thought something might happen, but I was just hoping that it wouldn't. Hmm, I blame Jimmy. But then a miracle happened. Sounds like we're getting a new used transmission today somehow. The guys over at Works Motorsports, which is literally a five minute walk from the track, they told us that they had an old WRX out back. It's not like they were a Subaru shop either. They just happened to have it in the back yeah. and it was just serendipitous.
In the meantime, low car continued to get closer and closer to breaking that two minute mark. Finally, after a few sessions, Adam threw down a 159.3. The coilovers, they could use a solid upgrade. The brakes, if I'm honest, they're doing their job, but I do feel like they just keep fading out early and it's starting to shake a little bit. So I think the rotors are starting to warp out. But Adam is not the only fast driver in Donut. On his last session with low car, my favorite other host, Jeremiah, hit a 158.4. I was chewing up some M3s, and then some M3s got me back, Joby. I was watching. I saw you get chewed up by some M3s. Oh. I didn't see you chew any up, <laughs> but... And with just enough time for everyone to get in one more session, High car arrived, risen from the ashes for the fifth, sixth time. I think so. Yeah. yeah. Oh, sounds about right. So I'm going to have to go run a sub two in high car. I have to. I know I can. There you go. As long as nothing blows up. Yeah. Why does everyone keep saying stuff like that? We say stuff like that, and then it does. It feels good, doesn't it? So, so good. While high car was getting fixed, the fastest lap that we were able to put down with our professional shop daddy, Adam, in low car was at 158. I drove the fastest lap, not Adam. What's up, Adam? He hates that so much. Zach Job just went out in high car, now that it's fixed, and laid down a 158. So that means one of two things. Zach is a faster driver than Adam, and Adam's fired and his family's poor now. Or Adam's about to run a faster lap than a 158. A 156.12 complete seconds faster than low car. So fast. Honestly, I think if we had all day at the track, I think high car could have gotten an even faster time mm -hmm. out there. I think there's another at least another like second and a half or two seconds. Like it, there's there's a lot in the tank on it. But this is a super fun car. And if you didn't have this to compare it to, you'd be over the moon with yeah, this. Exactly. To sum it up, in our opinion, you can get away with low cost tires and seats, mm -hmm. but spend the money on coilovers, brakes, and turbos, and skip the arrow altogether unless you really, really know what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Which car would you buy? Uh, I think we covered it pretty well on the track. $21,000 versus $43,000, a minute 58, a minute 56. Does more expensive mean more better? Yes, obviously numbers don't lie. It's what the whole universe is based on. But the question is, would you spend $10,000 per second? No. No way. Yes. Never again. Go work on a car, make videos with your friends. It's not that hard. It just kind of sucks sometimes, but most times it's very fun. Uh, bye.